Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel Among in Cloud. So today we are going to you know deep dive into one of the most foundational and powerful architectural patterns used in modern application design, which is the entire layered architecture. So by the end of this video, you will know exactly what is this architecture, why is it used, and how exactly it helps in scalability, security, and performance. And I will also walk you through each layer like web, application, and database with real-time exa examples. So first, let's understand what is this entire architecture. So first things first, entire architecture, or it's also called as a multi-layered or multi-tire architecture, it's about separating your application into multiple logical layers like presentation, business logic, data access, and service layers. So the big idea here is to lose coupling. Basically, each layer is designed to be independent. So changes in one layer do not break the other. And each layer can be scaled individually based on the traffic or the demand that you're going to get. So it's a popular choice in cloud native and enterprise application because it supports scalability, security, elasticity, and it's easy to maintain. Now let's take a, a real world uh, analogy, right? So imagine a restaurant. So the front desk acts as a presentation layer, which takes your order, right? So the kitchen in the restaurant, it, it is where exactly the business logic is, the in, uh, the the preparation of food happens in the kitchen, right? So that's where the business logic resides and the storage or the database exactly holds all the ingredients that are required to prepare the uh, food that you order. So everyone here in this setup does their part without interfering each other, right? So now you might ask me, what are the benefits of using this entire architecture? Firstly, technology flexibility meaning that you can use different tech stacks in each layer. So uh, you can use React in front end. For example, you can use Node.js in the back end, MySQL database. So whatever the technology you, you want to use, you can go ahead and use it. And there is no problem at all. And the second one is independent scalability. As I already told you, you can scale one only the application layer if it's under load without touching the web or database layer. So let's assume that th there is a high load on the database layer. In that scenario, what you can do, you can exactly in increase or scale up the database layer alone uh, rather than doing it for all the other layers. And security is very critical. So each layer is isolated. So if one is compromised, the others are always protected. Basically, the web or the front facing tire will be only accessed by the users and the rest of them will be private. Next, faster troubleshooting. Since you have everything layered, it's easier to pinpoint the issue and fix them. Next, improved maintainability. So teams can work on different layers in parallel. So if something happens on one layer, they can exactly go there and start working in that layer. Now that you understand the benefits, let's go deeper into the most common structure that is the tree, tree tire architecture and delve more into it. So as you can see on screen, the following uh, architecture shows an example of AWS architecture, which will allow you to interact with a web application from browser and perform required uh, functions. For example, if you want to order your favorite t-shirt or read a blog or leave a comment, etc. So in this architecture, as you can see, there are three different layers. One is web layer, application layer, and the database layer. Now coming to the web layer. So web layer is a user interfacing layer or user facing part of the application stack. So your end users interact with the web layer to collect or provide information about the application itself. Next, the application layer. Application layer mainly contains business logic and it acts upon information received by the 
previous layer which is your web layer the very important layer next one is database layer so all kinds of your user data and application data are stored in this layer which is the database layer now let's take a look at these layers in more detail so the web layer if you just focus on the web layer so this layer is also known as the presentation layer so the web layer provides the user interface that helps the user or the end user to interact with the application the web layer is your user interface in this case the website page where uh, the users enters information or browses it typically web developers may build a presentation layer uh, application uh, user interface in technologies like html css angular react uh, it can be also um, jsp and active server pages which is asp.net etc so this tier collects the information from the user and passes it to the next layer which is your application layer so the web layer is user facing so organizations spend most of their time improving the user experience and many organizations have a dedicated user experience team researching on various areas to understand how users can interact with the applications also the solution architect must ensure that the architecture design includes ux input and page load performance so there should be a seamless information flow between the web and the application layers to return the correct information to the users within the expected time frame uh, it can be user login profile loading etc right so that's a critical part so you, you cannot expect a user to wait more than a second uh, waiting for the response not even a second it will be in milliseconds right next very important part is the application layer so it's also known as a logic tier because the business logic resides inside the application tier and it's the core of the product where all the business logic resides so the presentation tier collects the information from the user and passes it to the logic tier to process it and get a result for example on an e-commerce website such as amazon users can enter a date range on the website order page to find their order summary in return the web layer passes the date range information to the application layer the application layer processes the user input to perform business logic such as the count of orders the sum of amounts and the number of items purchased etc so this return this returns information to the web layer to render it for the user right so generally in a three tier architecture all our algorithms and complex logic live in the application tier including creating a recommendation engine or showing personalized pages to other users as per uh, you know their browsing history etc so you may add a layer such as domain layer data access layer or presentation layer to make uh, you know four or a five tier architecture so developers may choose to implement this layer in a server side programming language for example c++ java .net or node js right so the application layer is a center of system design and it requires most of the design effort and most of the application features depend on the logic built at this application layer so application layer performs logic on the data stored in the database layer uh, now let's go and deep dive on the database layer in more detail right so talking about the database layer it's also known as data tier right so as the name itself says it stores all the information related to user profiles transaction etc essentially this contains any data that needs to be persisted in being stored in a data tier so this information is sent back to the application layer for logic processing and then eventually this is rendered to the user in the web layer for example suppose a user is logged into a website in their uh, using their user id and password in that case the application layer verifies the user credential with the information stored in the database if the credential matches the stored information uh, uh, with the stored information the user is allowed to log in and access the authorized area of website so 
the architect may choose to build a data tier in a relational database for example postgresql mariadb oracle database mysql microsoft sql server amazon aurora um, rds right so there are a lot of different databases that you can use and the architect may add a noise noisql uh, database as well uh, which can be dynamodb mongodb or uh, cassandra for that uh, scenario right so the data tier is predominantly used to store transaction information and hold user session information and application configuration as an architect you may consider adding caching caching databases such as memcached or redis to meet performance needs as well so you will learn more about various databases later in the coming videos uh, so hold on till the very end so now the data tier needs special attention in terms of security you know already know the reason why so you must protect user information by applying data encryption at rest and in transit and in entire architecture diagram you will notice that each layer has its own auto scaling configuration which means it can be scaled independently also each layer has a network boundary which means that having access to one layer doesn't allow access to other layers which which you need to keep in mind really really well and as an architect you need to decide on the number of tiers based on the application uh, complexity and user requirements for example you might add additional tiers such as data access layer for database access logic and keep the data storage layer from the database engine and you can add more layers to reduce complexity by defining logical separation which can help increase the applications general maintainability and ability to scale and achieve the performance so i hope this video helped in understanding what is this entire architecture and how you can use them and what's the benefits of it so if you are liking the content that i'm creating please consider subscribing and share it with your friends thank you and i will see you in the next one